I think my problem is I write my notes out of order in this little text oh, yes. edit file that I have. So it's real gibberish. Chris has good notes, though. I have yeah. okay notes. Well, I want to hear Matt's recap, though. So All nice. right. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me pull up my shit here. Today's the... Give me a Let's give me a starter. I, I remember we were with some crystals, and then uh, we were touching crystals. We escaped. That might have been two sessions ago. Then we we started um, right next to the statue after sleeping, facing a uh, a hallway with green goo. Right, that's right. I think someone tried to eat the goo. I think Aaron has tried to eat goo. Uh, maybe right away. I can't remember. But it sucked us in. We dove into the into the like the the slime and the sludge. Or Chris dove in, and then we all dove after him. Where there's some ropes. I remember ropes, but that's pretty standard. Uh, we got dragged into some weird vortex portal-y, not magical portal, just like gap. And we came out in the mushroom area, right? Mm -hmm. Or close enough. Yes. Um, and then hold on, what else I got here? Oh, I lost some hit points. That wasn't good. Uh, I forget what did that. Maybe the green goo, but I don't think so. And then we met Iridium. I'm down to 14 Marlboros. That's not good. I forget. We must have smoked a couple last time after a mm -hmm. probably a massive victory. And then my last note is character shadows glowing in the rock. So whatever that means. Um, and then mushrooms might taste good remember you are the chef um okay that's my recap um huh. okay so you guys Did so you, yeah let me fill it <laughs> in you were at the statue of roses you uh figured out you'd tie a rope to um wilbur because he can swim and breathe underwater right. i, I remember that part yeah and he goes under through a cave hole and up out of the cave hole. And then he tugs on it. The rope breaks. You guys mm -hmm. figure out the guy's going to go. You go through the jelly um, to meet Wilbur. And you find the rope. You pull on it. You meet Wilbur. Um, you get through that relatively uh, easily. And then uh, you, you see some fire in a town, sort of. Uh, not like a big town, but sort of like a trade um, market area, and you go over to this area, and there's a lot of people, there's a lot of different species of people, a lot of different creatures, um, dwarfs, dark elves, mushrooms, um, uh, some creatures you don't really, you didn't really um, recognize, a lot of um, underdark looking creatures. Mm. Like they've been, they haven't like either pale for their race or dry skinned and stuff like that. Um, turns out that the place that you were in was the uh, Western trade route um, th that belongs to the Drow Empire, uh, found in Trigard, wherever that, not Trigard, sorry, uh, Trident. And you then went shopping sort of through the market. Um, you ran into Dry, uh, no, sorry, Brandis, Bur Burden, um, who turns out to be a dwarf. Belden. Belden, yeah. Um, and da da Dalian, uh, Wild Breath, who happened to be a Trigar dwarf and a Sky dwarf, um, trying to find the Oracle, whatever that is. Um, then you guys ran into uh, the mushrooms, uh, the mushroom sellers, and her name was Barbara. Um, Barbora with a GH at the end of it. Um, and she like the sold world from Dragon Ball, sort of, yeah. And then she sold, um, you guys mushrooms. Aranus was able to deceive her and didn't take the mushroom, walked out like a robot. I believe he got a cool point for that. Yep. Um, but that's right. That's what robot notes means. Okay, yeah. got it. Um, <laughs> Good job. Yeah, I, wrote, I also I wrote, robot also made its way onto my sheet. Uh, okay. Then uh, Wilbur ate the shrooms, started tripping, 
and realize that he's going to see trouble. Turns out that he's poison um, and needs to find the draft, the, I think it was the, the water from the mushroom, or he needs help, let's say, from the mushroom um, keeper, I think, or some sort of uh, cultivator. A cultivator named Miz Mizia. Mizia. That is on the top of the largest mushroom. And I need the liquid that Mizia uses to grow the black mushrooms. Yes. Um, Chris, what did you change your Instagram to again? Um, I think Carly. it's Carly and Chris. I don't, I don't, I haven't used it and can't tell you how long. Is it two E's or E-Y? Uh, C-A-R-R-L-E-E. -E. R R. There it is. Got it. Thanks. Um, also Barbara, yeah, Bar Barboro needs a white crystal yep. for something. Then it's right next to the Oracle. And, uh, some people were selling water. Ignis and Wilbur went over and got some water and they got a free bottle of water. That's right. Uh, they're selling them for eight blue crystals each because water is hard to come by down here. And uh, this water is Ezra's king water. And Wilbur drank some and he grew an arm out of his back for the next two days. Oh, shit. That's right. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so this town <laughs> is cool. like a slave trade port. It's like a, yeah, it's a market slave trade. It's where people uh, from the uh, Underdark come and trade their goods, um, predominantly uh, found objects from deep in, 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 in the, underneath the ground in the rocks um, and try to trade for water and, and people and, and so on and so forth. And uh, the bar was named the Ludicrous King. Yes. And in the bar, we learn that we need to find a grotesque lad named Billy Boo, the white dwarf. I don't know why. Okay. Billy Boo was the head of the market, was in the market. Oh, okay. You guys, you guys decided to not speak to him. Um, right. and, and just completely overlooked that story hook. Um, that took hours to plan and just do that in the garbage and we're, carried on we're trying to save Wilbur's life right now we sure. can come back he'll still be in the market sure. I don't regret planning it though um, then you guys you, <laughs> you, you don't sound bitter though that's good maybe, yeah, yeah, no, you, consider, yeah. maybe you should <laughs> I have in my notes to find Billy Boo so it's not lost yeah. Yeah. we will find Billy Boo um, I, as you guys made your way towards the oh, mushroom, yeah. the mushroom uh, kingdom, which is, uh, I guess you guys, I'm not 100% sure which one of those story hooks you guys um, were going after. I think you're sort of going after trying to save Wilbur slash find the white um, crystal. I don't really well, I remember. Know, I think the crystal is on the other side in the crystal forest. That's where the oracle is. But here we're trying to find the mushroom for Wilbur, and we met some drow lady yeah. who was fighting someone who Wilbur killed, and then we're going to find her child in the yeah, there's uh, someone forest. there's someone taking there's someone or something or some something stealing drow children. And her name was um, the person who you, the girl who said, once you find the um, the children, come back to me and figure out uh, or bring us the news about the children. Her name was... Wilbur hit on her. Yeah, I think her name was Mishra. That's what I have here. Mishra Black. No, Mishra, Mishra Blade. Um, and... I think there was one other thing. Oh yeah, the dwarfs. The dwarfs came with you. That's. I think that's all. That's all we had. I will do a better job of note taking. Um. That's yeah, the group here for. 
Mar the market with the name was the grotesque lad. Oh, the market's name is the grotesque lad. Okay. And now the, the ludicrous king was the bar and the gro grotesque lad was the market. Okay. That makes sense now. And that's it. So you guys are looking at the, um, give me who's going to be leading this charge. Um, Wilbur is going to be up front with someone. I know he's looking for the tallest mushrooms. Yes. Okay. Um, well, your perception and your ability, every, you got to remember that this, there is no sky, it's all dark. So everything that you're seeing is in dark vision. Um, there are glimpses of light here and there. Most of the light that you see um, comes from the plants. So there are some glowing plants um, or perhaps weird little firefly type things. Um, so there's, there's a little bit of light, but not too much. Um, you see that you are entering, it's sort of like the, you guys who are familiar with the Artemisian forest, um, see a forest in front of you, um, sort of familiar um, to what the Artemisian forest looked like, but a lot more peculiar because it's made out of mushrooms instead of trees and um, familiar plant-like objects. Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, everyone. Does anyone have plant? I, I guess Chris is, I mean, uh, sorry, Jake is plant guy, right? You can communicate. So why don't you give me the uh, perception check? 26. Um, you notice that there are blue, black, white, red, and orange um, mushrooms. But you also notice that some of the mushrooms that are larger are pale um, and not, um, they're all similar. So the smaller mushrooms have different colors um, and the larger mushrooms are, look we'll to seem a little bit more similar to one another. Um, you're not hundred percent sure as to whether or not they grow into each other. If the plants you know, start out small and grow larger, you're not, I don't think you're very familiar with. Okay, with them, they can't tell me whether they're the same kind? They can certainly talk to you. Oh, well then have them talk to me and tell, tell me what's, what's. You, what's you, you yeah. pick a mushroom and you go talk to it, Jake. Fine, I pick <laughs> a mushroom here and I go talk to it. Good choice, good choice. What, how do you talk to it? What do you say? I say, what kind of mushroom are you? He says, uh, I am a, here, Jake, roll me a D6. Deuce. I am a, Black mushroom. Um, I'm a black mushroom. Yeah, and I see the one behind me is a gold mushroom, a green mushroom over there, and a blue mushroom. What makes you guys different other than your color? I've never touched a blue mushroom. What happens when someone touches you, you as a black mushroom? Um, usually their pupils dilate. Interesting. No you see Wilbur with his pupils dilated? I'm going to walk over to the gold mushroom and ask this mushroom, what happens when people touch you, mushroom? Their eyes dilate. Mm. Hey, guys, I think we have some magic mushrooms here. Fine. Let's pick some and save them. And you tell me if they scream when I do it. Is there anything I'm going to ask them <laughs> Is there anything else that happens after somebody's eyes dilate? 
I don't know people thoughts. But do they stay here? Or do they go away? Some they usually wander off. What about these other mushrooms behind you? Do you know anything about them? Those have been here for a while. I have not talked to them. Can you ask them if they know where? Oh shit! Hold on. If they know where? Um, where's that? Sh what's that person's name? Uh. Hold on, I gotta get. Oh, I gotta get um, we're looking. Ah, oh, fuck. Who were we looking for? Mizia. Mizra. Yeah. The mushroom farmer. Have you ever heard of Mizra. someone named Mizra? Mistia? Sure. No. They haven't heard I of do, I do know that you said farmer? Yes. I'll say farmer. Someone who comes and takes you parts of you guys over and over again. Yes. When was the last time you saw them? I see carts coming in and out of the forest. They don't communicate the way that you are. But I see carts coming in and out of forests with mushrooms. Everyone's eyes are not are, are dilated when they come out in and out of this forest. Yeah. Guys, this is where the farmer farms. Perfect. We're also uh ask them if they know where we can where we can harvest white crystals. I don't know about that. Hey, they don't know about that. I'm gonna go over to these bigger mushrooms and ask these mushrooms, hey, how long have you guys been here? Um this mushroom does not speak what are you speaking plants i guess he does um i've been here for thousands of years thousands of years welcome to the mushroom forest thank you thank you enjoy i hear there's a farmer that comes here all the time and takes you guys i don't know what a farmer is someone that looks like me but cuts you down you look like a weirdo you're a weirdo. <laughs> you see, guys, he called me a weirdo. <laughs> Yo, these mushrooms are fucked up. <laughs> All right, ask this one if it knows where the right crystal is, but then let's, I guess let's go. You guys know where to harvest white crystals since you've been here thousands of years? Uh, you know... <laughs> I could have sworn that there may or may not have been someone looking for a white crystal. But I don't know if it was you, one of your guys here. I think he went to the forest. Wait, who? Where are you from? Let's get out of here. Let's go down. Let's go through the forest. How tall are these mushrooms? Yeah. Um, the one that Jake is talking to is 15 feet. Um, okay. smaller ones are gonna be half that. And then the taller ones are like you know, two, two about two story building. All right, I cut up and pocket some mushrooms. Which mushroom are you cutting? Uh, blue. All right. Um, you so you take out your sword, you cut off a mushroom, some spores fly into the air, and I immediately cover my mouth and nose and back away. Um, you guys can have reactions to do that, but Matt, you're going to experience um, a little bit of. Force for a foreshadowing event. So oh, okay. you're going to see a glimpse into your future. Cool. 
And that is going to be, roll me a uh, one or, or roll me a, a uh, roll me a D4. I'll roll a D1. Start my computer. Matt, future. One second. I have to make this come, I have to, I have to make this happen. <laughs> you will die. Yeah. Great. What'd you roll? I rolled a three. It is an odd. So it's an unfortunate uh, event. You yes. have a foreshadowing. What, what, uh, what unfortunate event? Uh, you have a little bit of time to see. You have a, a you have like a twenty second window where you space out. Your eyes dilate, and you have. Okay. Um, an event where you see the future a little bit in, in, in front of you. Um, and it is a very negative, uh, not a happy feeling. Um, you're very nervous. You're very cold. You have cold sweats. And you see when you can fill that in. And you can take a little bit of time if you want. You don't have to do it right this second. So I just see, I, I can make up my own negative event. You can see it's got to be something, you know, um, it can be the effect, it can be perhaps. I got it, I got it. No, not a good no, thing. No one, no one immediate death, but you know, whatever. Um, and if you need help with that, I you can roll for it, but you can set it up. I got gotcha. you. Um, all right. Does anyone else want to do anything? Oh, and yeah, Matt, you're going to take some poison damage. And it's going to be poison damage. Oh, by the way. You are poisoned. Yeah. <laughs> but did I get the mushrooms? Did I bag the mushrooms? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. How many do? How many like quantities do I have? Do you have a like? You just grab it and you chunk. I don't know. You could. You have like a. You know, got a big bag. Big bag. Yeah, you got a big bag of mushrooms. Okay. Got mushrooms. Got smokes. We're we're starting to build an inventory here. We're gonna have some good times. I don't. Oh my god! Premonition mushrooms. That's a terrible trip. Well, those are great. Never know, they could come in handy. True. Right. It's going to start pushing are our we, way are through. Are we course. sure we want to leave the magic mushroom field? So considering I, these other things might do other things. Maybe we should, maybe we should take some of all of the mushrooms. You guys, all watch, you guys all watch this guy go up to a mushroom and cut it off. And his face, his pupils dilate. He gets cold sweats. He's scared. For 30 seconds, that's a long time. And then you guys just decide to move on. No, no questions or anything like that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, Wilbur's tripping. Uh, what's you guys moves here? Bagging up more shrooms? I'm not fucking mushrooms. I'm bagging up all the shrooms. I want one of each color. Okay. Now that last one wasn't so bad. In Twenty seconds. Um, but this time I'm going to take, I'm gonna take, take some cloth and I'm going to mask myself so that I don't. Uh... Actually, no, that's not true. I want to know what each of them do. So, what were the other colors? Green, blue, red, gold. Purple. We got blue, black, white, red, orange, and. Uh... All right, I want I want one of each. All right. Uh, which one are you going? Each. Which one are you doing now? Gold. Gold. So that'll be the orange one. Um, a puff of same shit happens. Um, mm -hmm. You just take you take seven poison damage. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. But I got my mushrooms. So the same thing happens though? Nothing happens. No okay, effect. nothing happens. But poison effect. Yeah. Okay. All right. That one was less exciting, so we can move on. No one else wants any mushrooms? These could be valuable. Wilbur's still tripping, so he's gonna pass. All right, let's go. <laughs> um okay. Do you walk through the, the forest? Yep. Looking looking for uh, any signs of a farm. Or uh, any people moving about up on high mushrooms? Uh, 
Um, okay. You guys are getting deeper and deeper into the forest. Things are, you see um, spore, patches of spores floating above, um, just in the air. Um, and as you get deeper, you start hearing um, noises. And it sounds sort of like, I don't know exactly what a hyena would sound like. But I would imagine, yeah, something like that. Something like that. Um, and some clanking of metal. Where's uh, and Um, don't really know just exactly what, um, what's coming up, but, um, give me a percent. Who's, who would be leading? Probably, uh, Wilbur. All right, Wilbur, give me a perception check. Unless someone stopped him, Wilbur would be stumbling forward. I, I think I would be leading the group since I'm the actual one. I'm the only one that's not tripping. I'm just, I'm like their, their Sherpa, their, their trip guide. <laughs> well, let me, I'm, a, I'm like a forest guy. So well, I'm not tripping. I'll, I'll take the lead. I'm happy to do that. That's supposed to be Wil my role. Wilbur will be right there next to Ignis. Thank All you. Right, never mind. You I'm so going much. to the back. I'm going, Aaron, if you leave. <laughs> I think we're going to experience a crash here. Oh, no, got it. Um, all right. So they're not what? My beasts aren't going to be oh, reception. You know what? My thing is doing the thing. My bad. Um, roll for what? Oh, perception. Nothing yet. Boo boo. Yeah. Oh. Well, give me oh, perception. Okay. I'll use what I have. Nice. So all my rolls nine and below are a ten because of my reliable talent, and I am. Um, That's an eighteen. I'm proficient at perception. So yeah, 18. From a All natural right. one. That was close. Um, <laughs> guys, come across a little opening in the grass. Um, well, I guess it would be more like moss. but um, And you hear this clanking, clanking noise coming up uh, ahead of you. Um, and... From your perception, would you would you roll? Eighteen. From your perception check, I don't think anyone knows what a knoll. You guys know what a knoll is? No, no. Okay, so what you see in front of you is like a humanoid version of a hyena. Uh, real quick, don't yeah. we have those two dwarves with us still? The tri yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. They're they're behind you, just studying. Okay. Looking. Um, and as you go, they uh, you guys can interact with them if you want. I'll, I'll pull out some dwarves. Yeah, cool, cool. Uh, they're they're not. You you can tell from the way that they are walking. They're more of like they're more ex exploratory, not, um, not battle dwarfs. Not battle dwarfs. Again, one of them has uh, the insignia of um, the triguard. And then the other Shield. one has the cloud. Yeah, and the other one has a cloud uh, with an island on it, and and uh, it looks like to be a castle on that island floating in the cloud. And uh, they're on. They're trying to find the oracle. Um, they're trying to ask it whether or not uh, the world is flat. But they're sort of scared to go into this forest. You guys are. They're just coming for the ride. Uh, as you guys get closer, you see that there are two gnolls fighting. Um, and you can't really make out. You see a tail. 
uh, the Knowles say something in what do they speak? They speak Knoll, so I don't think. Uh, oh shit! Language is going to be like. <laughs> That's about um, it. Do they appear to be in in uh, battle, like swinging their? Oh, oh, they are. They are in battle. Um, you can see that the weeds around them are moving. Um, oh, we can't are... see that they're fighting. Oh, and there are three things that you can't see. I'll put them out there. Hmm. They look as if they are. Let's see, do they do they sense? Do they see you? Are you guys sneaking up? Are you guys? How do you? Here they are. So as Wilbur's we approach, tripping, he's yeah. stumbling. But Wilbur's also two inches high or some shit. So I feel like right not now gonna... they don't see you. Okay. <laughs> but it's when they do notice you, they, then you'll roll your. Gotcha. Um. So. Yeah, I guess as we're walking up, I'm gonna as I see us approaching people, I'm gonna. Like head towards the the two lead. <laughs> I'm gonna um, I'm gonna hold up a, a fist and then crouch down low, so everyone stops. I don't know if they all stop. I'm just gonna tell her. I'm gonna tell everyone to hold and then like crouch low. So you guys are all gonna sneak in. Um, okay, give me a. Uh... Yeah, are, you, are you guys going to try to, like, what's your plan? Are you going to try to sneak by them, or are you guys going to try to I'm going to, yeah, I think, I think we're, uh, I, my idea would be to circle around them, see what's going on, um, because we don't know who we want to help yet. We can't see the other things they're fighting, and we don't know what these things are. Okay. I say we start blasting. I said all. All I said was I hold up the fist to hold and I melt down. If anyone wants to do what they want to do, are these guys standing right next to each other? Yeah, but they look as if they're. Um, they're are they looking. like back to back, circled up, like fighting next to each other? They or are like forming a shield line. They are. They look. Other? They look as if they're trying to find something in the brush. Okay. So I'm gonna hold on my face. I'm gonna be like, um, it looks like I was like, I don't know what those things are. And it looks like they're looking for something. Let's stay out of their way. So attack right away. Spencer, one question for you. Yeah. Have I uh received my first level of exhaustion yet? Yes. Okay, I'll mark that on. And that's gonna uh I think that just lowers your. I have disadvantage on uh, ability yeah, checks. That's right. All right. So, Aaron and everyone that's in the brush, you have advantage on uh, dex saves because you're in cover right now. Oh, so, wow. so do the, um, so do the, the other people. Gotcha. Um, okay, as you walk, you're trying to sneak around. As you as you walk, you hear. Um, I'm staying where we are. As you're circling around them, right? So I'm I'm way back. Yeah, I'm gonna. So I'm. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get low. Oh, sorry. I'm in the zoom thing. Um, I'm going. Wolver is gonna follow you to get low, and but at his normal height, right. Um, start circling around this way, stealthily, quietly. All right, give me a. Uh, how would I do the Chris? How would I do a uh, their stealth, stealth versus? versus my... you, what's their? You can do stealth versus their passive perception. Okay. Since they're looking for something else, yeah. or you can do their active since they're actively searching for something moving in the brush. All right, it'll be uh, their passive perceptions of looking for something else. 
Um, but, right. the, but the something else is also going to have its own perception. Yeah. While this is going on, I'm I'm waiting like a sniper, like bow drawn. Okay. First sign of danger. All right. Uh, give me your sneak, um, Aaron. That would be your. Um, Stealth is 23. Right. Wilbur was with him, who got a five. Oh, um, Wilbur, you stumble, you fall, you clank, you make noise. And just Not like sure. that, um, the gnolls turn to you. Um, and three gog goggles jump out of the order ethereal and back into the material plane and sort of hiss at you. I let loose. And you hear the um you hear the uh Knowles sort of say oh! and point towards the three um All right. Well, whatever those things are, gross, they are less like dangerous creatures. than the things that can pop in and out of existence. So let's fucking kill these cats. Uh, yeah, I, I, I fire on the goblins meat, like as soon as they turn, as soon as I hear the noise. All right, uh, Matt, you'll get a, you'll get a, um, you get the first shot, but everyone else roll, roll initiative. Cool. Oh, yeah. I still roll initiative, right, for future turns. Yeah, well, you're you you roll initiative, but you'll get um, right. oh my god, so you get it. Yeah, you get advanced. All right, all right. All right six. All right. So your reliable talent works on the only things you're proficient in. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, the Knowles got a fourteen. I don't think you could be a, right. a, a proficient in initiative. <laughs> <laughs> you're just really good at going first. I'm fucking great. You man. should be you're brave. Be. You're brave. You're brave. That's what brave it is. Man. So basically, yeah, Rover trips. I turn and look at him. And I go last. <laughs> you're checking on your boy. That's noble. Um, the two, the two uh, dwarfs, um, are gonna chill back. They're gonna go uh, at zero, but they will. Go if they have to. Computer is crawling. So I'm gonna make. I'll just make them um, over here. I'll make them clone version of a red version of Jake's. Here. They're gonna say, "Oh my!" Uh, Brandis Birdwin. Looks at the dwarf and says, ooh, ooh, ah, gentlemen, please help us survive. Uh, Chris, what'd you get? I got a four. Not good. Jake, what'd you get? What was it? D6? Yeah. No, uh, no, your initiative. Oh. Eight. Okay, Jake. Matt, what'd you get? I got a 12. Ooh, Noles go first. But I still got my shot, right? Um, yeah. You can take, yeah, okay. Right, like Surprise, I should, I should, I should Yeah, which one are you going for? Yeah. I'll make uh, one yellow and one. I'm going to attack them both because they're right next to each other. So. Wait. Oh. All right. Well, it's a little late for that, Aaron. That <laughs> oh, first one. So I'm attacking the one on the left first. That's one natural 20 one. and one 30. So I assume those both hit. A 19 and a 20. Damn. Jesus. Yeah, not, so that's, not attacking uh, the things that can pop in and out of existence. Well, I was aiming at them already. So I feel like I should, like, if it's like what a sneak attack, right? I can't like switch get? my target. What'd you get? I did. Uh, I got a, a natural twenty and uh, and a thirty. 
So, so that's a 1926 damage on the one on the left. Well, hold, what was the armor? The uh... what? It was one was a natural 20 and one was a 30. So, do they hit? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so 26 damage for the one on the left, and then the one on the right is going to take, that's a 21 and a, does a 17 hit? Uh, yeah. Okay, so the one on the right is going to take, oh, god damn, bad damage rolls. The one on the right is going to take 13, 12, sorry, 12 damage. So 26 on the left, this guy, Goblin 3. Have your your kill with the one that you got. With the oh, it's like a like a uh, just he did he turned and saw when Wilbur fell, and by this time he had craned his neck around. There was an arrow through his skull, so he was down quick. Um, the other one was the other shot was just for good measure, just so he knew I was there. Nice. And then the other one takes thirteen damage. This one, the non dead one. Sorry, 12 damage. Okay. No. So, Noel, um, this guy is dead. I don't see where I am on the board. You're right here. Oh, oh that's, yeah, that's, well, that's not me. No, that's yeah. what we're, Oh, shit. Yeah, maybe, maybe I didn't put you on. Oh, well, get me in, coach. Yeah. Get me in, Co. Um. All right, Noel's going to go. Noel's going to okay. yell. Um, Noah's going to shoot its longbow. Uh, actually, yeah, Noah's going to shoot its longbow at Marinus. Um, and does a Thirteen hit you, nah, dog. Yeah, thirteen. Well, and he says e e, which translates to fuck. Um, and that's all he's gonna do, Matt. Oh, I'm up again. Wow, this is fun. All no, right, that's so your, that's gonna be that'll be your that's I think that's gonna be your turn. Then you'll go back. Okay, that. that's that's fair. That's um, fair. the go the goblets are gonna go now. The goblins have just jumped back into uh, the material plane. They are what looks like uh, large, skinless. Um, it's like Doctor Evil's cat, massive, pig. Um, so they're they going see to see Aranus right there, standing out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, and they are all going to uh, jump on Aranus. Uh, <laughs> that's tough because Wilbur fell. That's tough. Great. And they're all going to conjure a spell with fog. Um, so a big fog comes up over the area. Um, it's, it's it's cast as a spell, so we can innately cast the following spells. Okay, so one of them is going to cast uh, cat, cat one, uh, which will be red. It's going to whatever color this is. Cast the fog spell, uh, making it harder for everyone to hit them, and then cat two is going to. They're all going to attack. With a bite. So that's a 19 plus a, so it's a 24. That's a 20 and a 13, 18, 18, 20, and 24. Did any of those hit you? Yeah, all three. Oh boy. Um, piercing damage coming your way. Hold your horses. I'm excited. I'm going to kill you. Um, 1d6 plus 3. Let's go. That's 7. Come on. High numbers. Ooh, 6 and ooh, ooh, 9. 9, 6, and 7. Piercing damage. 9, 6, and 7. Ooh. Last one. 
Let's see what this spell is. Um, let's see. Uh, it's now going to be Sprock's turn. I'm going to shoot a short bow at this null goblin thing over here. Short bow the, the null? Yeah. Okay. Does an 18 hit? Uh, yes. And he takes fucking stupid two piercing damage. Ah. Eek, eek. Another fuck coming out of his mouth. Um. All right, and then I'm just going. Uh, I can you can we do spells yet, or we still can't do magic? Um, you There's... guys cannot. You guys cannot do uh, magic for another. I believe it was two days. Yeah, we're we're still a ways off. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't think I can do another shot as a bonus action, so I'm done. Um, you, Jake, you can. Your um, innate ability is to turn into animals. So you you don't. That's not a spell. Okay. Or, I can see. Yeah, can you're, you can you can still morph. It would be like me telling you you can't take a shit. You can still you can you're allowed to, to morph. That's all. Okay, because that's part of your uh, being. You're also telepathic. Don't forget that you're a mind player. Um, Aranus. Hello. Time for these dogs oh. to get worked. Jamie, I'll have a scotch. Thanks. Oh, maybe I'll have a scotch after I drink this. Uh, I'm gonna just throw it out in the air, and hopefully she, she's like, you know, I love that guy. I'm gonna give him a scotch, and you know, you, you know, we'll fill that in there. See if everyone else notices while I blow him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Uh, uh... Secret. See okay. while I peg him. So, <laughs> Ooh. Spencer gets really happy for a moment. You know what's happening. Hold on, sorry, one sec. In the corner watching. Sick, sick fog. Oh, and remember, there's a thick fog. So, yes. So, what does that mean? Um. So lightly now... obscured. So you guys, you guys in the grass have um, half cover. Now you have advantage on your deck saves. You're, I would say you're three quarter, three quarter cover. Every, uh, so if you're in the grass area, which everyone is, everyone has three quarter cover. So it's a plus five AC advantages on deck saves. At the moment. Oh, if I have plus five AC, then that twenty would have tied me. Not. Yeah, the attack would have happened first. Oh, okay. Uh, if it tied you, it if it meets it, it beats it. So, so oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Uh, oh, you mean the attack? The attacker ties. The attacker wins. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Hold on. I'm just looking up what these spells are. So okay. Um, so uh, pull out the true blade, and I'm gonna attack uh, one of these one of these little cat gods. All right, true blade. So when true blade attacks, do you, doesn't it have like a special? Yeah. So, um, well, I'm attuned to it, so I get plus one to attack rolls. Um, it has charges, and then I roll a d4, and then on a one, I gain a guidance spell. On a two, I gain the effect of the true strike spell. And then on a three or four, the scimitar begins to speak and tells its owner the true answer to one question in a quiet, serpentine voice. 
Nice. <laughs> In the um, middle of battle. <laughs> so, um, what I will do is, yeah, fuck it. Let's just go for it. Um, and then the charges. Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember when the charges come back. These guys are beastial. It doesn't tell me when the charges come back. Sorry, it's my first time using it. Uh, so, uh, they come back at the um... oh dawn each day. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So yeah, fuck it. Let's try it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use a bonus action to. Or do I have to use a bonus action? It doesn't say I need to use a bonus action. It just says that I can use I can use a charge. You use it when you make the attack if it applies to the attack. Okay. So I am going to roll a d4. It is a four. So it starts hissing and speaking as I attack this creature. Uh, does a 24 hit? Yes. So you attack cat one. Cat one. I deal nine damage. And then I ask the, I ask the blade, can Doomhand be killed? So um, you, you, you swing your, your, your sword and you hit this white looking, no, pink looking cat with no skin, huge Dr. Evil looking cat. Um, any nine damage? Nine damage. And you hear this. <laughs> How do I not do a Harry Potter here? You hear, uh, you, Potter, you have to do right. a Harry Potter. You, do, you, you, hear, you hear this. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> this is Harry Potter's again. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, I can't hear a fucking thing you're saying. He says, yes. uh, in serpent voice, he says, Ask me a question, Aaron. Ask me a question. I know uh, everything about you. And he tells you, uh, well, before before you get you, so you ask me a question, Eric. Um, oh, fuck. I mean, I guess the question I want to ask is, do um, where did we find this thing here? Do you have the time to listen to me whine? That's funny. Um, remember, you're in the middle of that. Right. About everything and everyone all at once. Yeah, I think uh the the question I would ask is um can you uh where can we find the things we're looking for? Hold on. I mean we can do these actions and questions in battle, but I don't think you need to ask. A creature tuned to the blade has a plus one attack. True blade has two charges, which gain, regains dawn each day. So you have a whole day to use the charge. You don't have to do it. Oh, anymore. okay. So I don't have to do it right now. Thank God. All right. I'll okay. ask the question in a little bit. Let him keep whispering to me and snitch. You, you're going to be like, oh, shit, really? Yeah. He's going <laughs> to, but your sword, I'll, t I'll tell you what his sword is thinking. He's, you hear him, you hear him. He's like, mm, oh, damn. Um, <laughs> yuck. Ugh. Uh, all right, uh, Wilbur. Wilbur's up. Okay, Wilbur is going three to... three arms. He's going to use that third, third arm to bonus action rage. And as part of my bonus action rage, I get to move half my movement. So I'm going to use that half my movement to stand up. So you see Wilbur do a kip up. I got all angry and his claws just start getting really long. I'm going to uh, run around these around Aranus, stay behind me. And I'm going to uh, swing at the black one. 
with my claws. Okay. All right. So, we'll, and I'm going to do it recklessly. So, advantage. I assume a 13 misses. Um, 13 hits. Tie. 13 hits. Okay. So, that so first one does. That's it. Does 10 Which, slashing damage. And you need to make me a wisdom. Where'd it go? A wisdom saving throw. DC 16. So I get 10, I get 10 damage. Now I have to do a wisdom save. Yeah, it's 10 slashing damage. Yeah, and a wisdom save. DC 16. Ooh, natural 20. 22. Okay. Um, so I still use the charge, I guess. All right, so nothing happens on that. I'm going to make my second attack at advantage. Uh, 28, I assume, hits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that does nine slashing damage. Make me another wisdom saving throw. Which Are you attacking this one? That... Same one, the black one, same one. I'm just clawing. Which damage did you do? Those nine slashing. Describe your kill. Oh, okay. Well, I, I slash once and you see some almost looks like magic come out of his claws and then fade and then he gets angry and slashes a second time. Slash goes right through the throat. And when I use the natural weapon, which is my claws, I get another free claw attack. So I'm going to go to the one right next to me and slash at that one. A 27, I assume, hits. That one takes nine slashing damage, and it needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. It takes how much damage? Nine? Nine, yeah. Oh, okay, another wisdom. Yep. Uh, 16. It meets it, so nothing happens. All right, and that's my turn. And I'm raging. All right, Noel. Um, Noel is going to turn around, hurt, and start to run and stop. Um, and you're going to hear this <laughs> noise coming from his mouth. And uh, a high squeal as give me a give me a everyone give me a perception check with um disadvantage okay. twenty seven that's Two. your disadvantage that's my natural one the one was twenty eight I got two natural 20s for a 25. Um, it's, in, it's in the log. Same. Nice. That's uh, where my nat 20s come out. Thanks, Wilbur. <laughs> you start seeing um, in the background, you start seeing some of these mushrooms moving towards you guys. Seems in your peripheral vision, you guys can tell that the jungle is very much alive. These plants are alive, the mushrooms are alive, and they're coming towards you guys. Um, and sort of the, these mushrooms um, have stopped the knoll in its tracks. And if the knoll is stopped in its tracks, He's dead. He's like very injured and running away. And he just stops. You guys are smart enough to realize that perhaps the, what he's looking at is more dangerous than the three cats and two dwarfs and group of people. Um, the Nola is not going to fight. He's going to fuck. And it's Matt's turn. All right. Well. I don't, I'm going to fire at the, oh, one of these cats is dead, right? 
the black one is. Yeah, yeah the black. black one you said. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and pick off this null. Nice. Tell him, teach him, teach him to run from me. So that's one twenty four and one twenty seven. That's the those both hit. Uh, the null. Yeah. Yeah, those hit. Okay, so he takes eighteen damage. Uh, describe a kill. Um, I said, "Where are you going? Don't run!" And I just let two arrows go into the back of his skull as he's turned around. I said, "Chose you right." That's pretty badass. Um, and then for my bonus action, I am just going to duck down into the grass. Okay. Um, I still don't. Where am I? I'm around here somewhere, it. right? Yeah, you are. You're in the grass. I mean, it doesn't really. As long as I'm in the grass, it doesn't really matter where I am. But you can just drop me somewhere. I don't know. Let me drop you in there. Here. But not maybe not right next to the guy. You're okay, like yeah, right, good. right over here. All right. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm getting low to. You're being a bitch. Being a bitch. Yes, exactly. Just say what it is. I mean, um, I've been, been arrowing people in the head. I think that's pretty good. All right. Well, the my boys here are going to uh, continue to attack uh, Aranus since they are looking at him. And what are the bitches? Wilbur's right there slashing at him. That's true. Um, and he went reckless, so you have advantage against them. Hit, you hit one of them. Okay, so as a as a uh, when he takes when he takes damage, I can cast a spell, and the and the cat can enter uh, the border ethereal as a reaction. So one of them is going to jump out. Okay, um, and so you can no longer. So it is visible. But it cannot be affected by anything on this planet. So it's like a ghost. So it's sort of like a it's sort of like a petrified it's a petrified form of himself as a skin like hmm. held together by a magic energy. Um, and I will put him in light blue. That's the one. I'm assuming. Well, this is this is. I'll make that the white one is the one. That well, no, the purple one was the one I would have hit, and that's the one that would have popped out. Okay. Okay. White. This guy I'll change to Violet. All right. Uh, Violet guy is going to attack Aranus for. Come on, baby. High number, high number, high number. Oh, I'm getting good. Uh, that's uh, 20. Yeah. Two, five. Yeah, baby. Hope this is a six, Aaron. It's not. It's a fucking three plus three. It's a six. Piercing really. I had nine though. No. Are you dead? It's six. Yeah. Why would I be dead? I have so much help. Could flame on. <laughs> I'm almost halfway though, which means. Oh um, shit! We're one fucking. <laughs> we're one cat away. Their hope is Noel doesn't turn around and oh no, he's dead. Sorry. I still Sorry. have fifty some hit points to get down to to be able to go there. You might die before that. Um Sprock, tell us. Um is just this one white one left? This uh the white one has its body has jumped into the border ethereal plane. It can no longer be tampered with until it jumps back. And the violet? Um, that's still there. And who's this in between me and violet? Um, that's the big titted Ignis. Okay, it's me. I'm gonna move over to here. And then I'm going to uh, pull out my wand of wonder. Oh, and, hell yes. And point it at the violet and and use a charge and see what happens. 
Look. I'm gonna fucking kill that thing. I'm gonna fucking kill Wilbur. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Or Aranus. Or both. 81. Oh. oh no. Oh no. Is that the fireballs? No, I cast I invisibility on myself. Oh, oh that's good. God. That's not bad. Not I was all. hoping for fireballs, but that's fine. I think that's wild magic surges. 81 as a fireball. Okay, so I'm invisible. Um, nice. Cool. Okay. Um, at will, so it says at will I can cast, well, it doesn't matter. Um, it's Aaron's turn. Um, cut this motherfucker down. Cut this motherfucker down. Uh, 14. Okay. That hits? Uh, that hits. Yes. Boom. Let's get it. 11 slashing damage. Ooh. Um, he also is going to now, as a reaction, jump into the ethereal. That was 11? Yeah. Um, let me roll for these guys. 10. Um, okay. Um, the action stops. Um, these guys are both in... You just see there, you can interact if you want, but when you go up to it, it just looks like a shadowed version of itself. They're stuck in a uh, stance. Um, one looks like it was meowing. The other one looks like it was getting ready to strike. Um, but they jumped into the uh, plane. And as you, uh, as the fighting stops, the dwarfs you see, oh my God, look over there. Um, and you see these mushroom characters start walking towards you. Um, and they come over and they say, who speaks, who would speak, uh, who are these guys speak? Languages, understands the language of its creator, but cannot speak. Oh, they're mushrooms and they're staring at you and they're saying something and you don't know what they're saying. Um, Jake's invisible. These creatures start coming towards us. They are standing not, there. Just like, they look like any perception, uh, Chris. Well, I mean, if Wilbur is raging, he sees these other things coming towards him, he'd probably attack them too. That makes sense. A 15. Um, they look like massive mushroom people. Um, similar to Barbara, the mushroom oh. um, character in the mushroom shop. But uh, they, um, one of them, one of them is massive. One of them is huge. Okay, they sense. look like they look like the like a same shape as Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't attack them then. I'll drop um, the rage. They are, they are talking. Um, it's clear that uh, from this interaction that Barbara um, learned common somehow, um, but doesn't seem that these. Mushroom creatures are able to speak common. They can only speak the language of their creator, which is interesting. Wolver is going to uh, walk up towards these mushroom people um, and uh, say in common, "Hello, uh, we're we're looking for." Um, Someone who grows the black mushroom. Do you know where they are? They understand the language of its creator. They cannot speak. How do they react? 
Um, they come closer. Uh, and the purple one is going to act sort of this one. This one appears to be stronger, much bulkier. Um, and the orange ones seem to be holding it back. Um, and they're trying to figure out how to, whether or not you are. I think the dice are going to have to determine this. Uh, what do you got? What else do you, uh, the other guys want to do here? Uh, it looks like the, from what you can tell, the Knoll was afraid of these guys. They are mushroom people. You are in a mushroom forest. They're actually, they're mushroom, sort of like Barbara, but you can't communicate with them because they don't know your language. Do you do the ignorant thing and start blasting? Do you? Wolver would start trying to do some weird sort of hand gestures and motions and signal things. Okay. Um, like point towards the mushroom and then point towards something black that he has. Like back and forth, black mushroom. And then I hand gesture of something growing, growing, and then black mushroom. The really bad tourist. Um, and then I point further into the forest. You go, us follow. This big purple guy is going to come over to uh, Wilbur and stare him in the face. And he's going to see that. One of this guy's eyes are huge, one of them small, green eyes. Um, I just think that's from the mushroom I've been taking. Uh, Aaronis, what are you doing? Um, I mean, I'm going to track with them. I mean, if... Right, they they're leading us into the forest, right? Well, right now they're still right now they're. <laughs> oh, I thought he said we were up <laughs> that, that's what there. Wilbur was trying to communicate. It probably didn't go so well. Oh, oh, oh my God! So we're just staring each other down. Wilbur's huge pupils, this giant creature staring at me. Are they are plants based? Um, I mean, shit. I'll I'll speak in Draconic a little bit just to see if they pick that up at all. Nothing. Yeah, I'll speak in okay, Goblin. Sure. I'm gonna speak right, in Goblin to them. them. All right, I'll I'll I, but I have to break my invisibility concentration to talk to them. Right? Oh shit! <laughs> okay, is that, is that true? Um, no, uh, invisibility breaks when you cast a spell, a task, yeah. or choose to drop it. That would be kind of shitty if you, well, then you couldn't, like, you tripped on, you tripped and hit something and you were like, ow, and then you're no longer invisible. Yeah. You can, you can speak while you're invisible. All right, then I'm going to talk to them because I can talk plan. Um, they just they just see Wilbur talking and hear you. Yeah, what did Wilbur ask them? Thank where you. the um, where someone who grew the black mushrooms was, and if they could show us the way. Okay, so I interpret that in plant speak. All right, what would you guys like for mushroom people to sound like? The valley girl. British. Yeah. Let's see. Let's hear your British. Let's hear your British. Yeah. Answer. Go British. Um, that's the same shit I've been doing this whole time. Oh, yeah. oh God. All right. Do, uh, uh, Is that really what that was? Do, no. Okay. Do you That can't be true. It's more, it's you know more like they're, they're Definitely Albanian. Don't you. Mushrooms Albanian. is probably more like they're Albanian. <laughs> middle, middle European. Yeah. They're Albanian. 
Um, they're in New York, Bronx, Albanian. Um, what are you asking? Where uh, does he know where the guy who grows the black mushrooms are, and can he lead us there? I uh, don't uh, know this uh, black mushroom uh, guys. Uh, what the? Uh, that's what the pink guy sounds like. Is that but like the, Kazakhstan? Like what? Are you no, doing? that's that's Bronx. That's Bronx uh, Albanian. Bronx, Bronx. Albanian. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, that's not bad. Yeah, the people here they talking to the people uh, the black uh, mushroom. Uh, hey, Charlie, Charlie. And then uh, the guy's name is Charlie, is uh, one of the mushroom guys. And he says, hey, Charlie. You're trying to sound like Khabib. Hey, I want the black mushroom, uh, the keep, the keeper. And Charlie says, uh, the black mushroom, huh? okay. Well, how do I know you? How do I know you that you are uh, worthy of the Black Mushroom Keeper in the Mush Mushroom Kingdom? Why don't you uh, tell right. me? I, I interpret back to the group. He wants to know whether or not we're worthy of knowing where these this mushrooms are. How can we prove we're worthy? All right, ask him, how can we prove we're worthy? And then ask well, him to know where the white crystals are. Oh, the white crystal. Oh, we love white crystal. We have white crystal. We have it. We have it. Uh, nice. Uh, but uh, let's show me you're worthy. And let's fight the... Uh, let's fight the big... Uh, let's uh, fight the bigger something, uh, bigger... Uh, you stay right here. Stay right here. Yeah. Oh god. Um. They sort of huddle around each other. Um. And the large uh, Charlie is going to come back and say, "Okay, I don't want to bring you to the uh, mushroom kingdom until I know that you're uh, worthy and okay to come." So you fight the uh, big chiefy, and uh, if you survive the couple rounds, I know you're worthy and uh, can handle it. But uh, let me just tell you something: this sport is a special. No, oh, go ahead. He pushes the purple, uh, tr uh, the purple mushroom uh, towards you, and he says, hey, that is it. "Go ahead, uh, do your thing. Prove it." And. Uh, Mushroom Golem's going to swing at Wilbur. Could Wilbur rage up? Uh, yeah. Okay. Wilbur is raging. Um, but everyone's going to have to roll their initiative. Now. Actually, this will be Wilbur here. Um, is it just a Wilbur fight? I don't know. Everyone can, everyone's going to roll initiative here. But this is a uh, pretty big guy, so... You see Wilbur's tail get about as long as he is tall. What about his arm? No, he has a third arm in the back, so it looks like a little tail and then a bigger tail behind it. Hilarious. And a question, does anyone have a random shield that they're not using? Uh, actually... Because Wilbur could hold a shield with his third hand. Got a little boost to his AC. One second, do I have... So Wilbur no. initiative? No, I don't. Yeah, Wilbur, everyone initiative. Wilbur got a 20. Oh, wait, wow. no. So I'm still at disadvantage because of... I can give a ham him a hammer to hold. 21. I got a 13. 23. Eight. Wow. Oh. So Matt got a 23. Yeah. Ernest got a 21. I got a, I got a 13 because I'm disadvantaged. Exactly. I got an A because I suck. Yeah, Sprock got an A because he sucks. Uh, Aaronis, what'd you get? You got 21, and then uh, Sprock got a 14. 
Eight. Oh, sorry. Uh, Chris, what'd you get? A 13. All right. Charlie and uh, the other mushroom guy are sitting there watching. Matt, you're up. All right. Well, I no spells, so I guess we're just fighting this guy. So I, I just take a couple couple shots at him. That's one. One fourteen and one twenty seven. Um, those are the one hits. Was it one hits? Yeah. All right, so that does nine damage. Um, our measurements. Um, what kind of damage is that? Nine. No, what kind of damage? Piercing, slashing? Oh, it's piercing. All right. Um, every creature, so it takes nine damage. Every creature within five feet takes uh -oh. 2d12 poison damage or half that in the deck save. Um, uh, I have danger sense, so I believe I have advantage on deck saves I can see. That'll be yes. that point. Wait, what did we say? It was an A's within five feet. Yeah, I got a six. Just over. Just over. Is it is it um, for five or is it one to one still? It's one to one, right? So are we all within range? Yeah, it's just, it's just Wilbur. Oh, okay. No, it's one to one. Uh, Aaron, is you're you're out. Ah, Matt, you're in. Sprock is in. One to one. Oh, I should have backed up. I guess is a, 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 it's like one person square. Oh, it's like yeah, yeah. No, Christian, right. right. yeah, yeah. I can put a I can put a checker on this actually. Go ahead and do your. Uh, your I got save. a I got a sixteen deck save. Um, you do not you do not hit it. Um, take the uh, two d twelve. Um, take eight plus. Uh, I'll take ten. Ten okay. points of damage. Um, Aaron, if you're up. Um, I'm gonna draw up my short bow while he's distracted doing this attack and shoot him in the face with advantage. The real all over again. <laughs> I I also I backed up as my. The end of my turn. 26 and oh that Natty is gonna be bad. Oh right, because it goes up 10, so 20 or 19. That hits him. Boom. Let's shoot him in the face. 10 damage plus my nice attack. What kind of damage is that? Uh it's my short bow. It's just regular piercing, I think. Yeah, just pier 10 piercing damage. And then what about your sneak attack? Sneak attack is 15 damage. I got an eight on the deck save for that attack. All right, so I have to do a save, Aaron. I, I guess. No, for, for your let's finish Aaron's turn, then we'll do you. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you so you did you did how much damage? I'm sorry. Uh 25 total damage. Okay. And then, uh, Matt, how, I'm sorry, I didn't write that down. How much damage did you do? Uh, on the first one? Oh, how much damage did I do? Nine. Yeah, you did. Yeah, okay. Nine. Yeah. You missed one, then you hit one. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Aaron, you hit him twice, right? Yep. All right, so Chris, you do, you've got, let's see, 10 plus, you got 21, uh, Poison damage on the first one and the second one. Uh, the second one I rolled a 12, so I failed. Yeah. Uh, five and 
So you got five and six, that's 11 plus 21, so 30, 32 poison damage. Yep. Um, Sprock. Yeah. Oh, Wilbur, Wilbur, you're up. Uh, Wilbur is... Fuck, what am I going to do? <laughs> fuck. Wilbur's raging, and yeah. he doesn't give a fuck. Uh, he's going to bonus action scream, and everyone has advantage against uh, this thing until my next turn. Nice. And then I'm going to swing away with my uh, maul, so it does bludgeoning damage recklessly. A 20 to hit. Uh, that hits. For 12 bludgeoning damage. How much? 12. Okay. Um, I assume I would fail a deck save from hitting it if it poofs out. Yeah. Uh, but in either case, it needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh... Nine. Uh, so it's going to take 2d12 of psychic damage. It can take 18 psychic damage. Oh, wait. No, it doesn't. I have to do... Wait, let me do that. I have to hit with my tail first. And then I might swing my tail around for my second attack. Let's see if... Okay. Psychic damage? Yeah, so the 18, it would take that 18 psychic damage. And I rolled a 21 for the tail attack. So that would do six piercing damage. Okay. And um, any spore damage for that piercing or the bludgeoning? Yeah, so both of them do that. So you have to give the uh, DC save. Well, I assume if I'm attacking, I'm auto failing those. Uh, no, it's just you have to just do it. All oh. creatures will be five feet. Would you? You can do a deck save. Oh, I got a nine on the first one. Because you imagine you hit and it comes out and you can jump out. That fails. And a nine and a 13. So those both fail. <laughs> yeah. You get 20 more and the first one and another 15. So another 35. Okay. Um, now it's the now it's Brock's turn. You see, what? Yeah. Uh, you um, see, you see Charlie in the back seeing um, Wilbur taking hits. He feels like this. His face looks, looks like this. I don't know. It looks like a fucking mushroom. Yeah, I'm gonna go up to the thing and I'm going to use tentacles. Ooh. Twenty three. I mean, that seems like it would hit. That is. So it's uh five. All right, five psychic damage. Is the target medium or smaller? He is a large construct. All right, then never mind. He's not grappled. It just takes five. <laughs> so you're trying to eat its brain? I would, love, I would love to eat its brain. True. We can get you there. Uh, but how much damage did you do? Only five. And what kind? Psychic. Okay. No poofs. He goes, ooh, my head. Um, all right. Uh, he is going to make two slam attacks. Uh, both of them are going to... Uh, Wilbur. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Um, it's got the plus 10. That's 25 and 26. Wow, these are high rolls. All, all uh, they that. both hit me? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, you're not going to like this, but oh, 5d8 plus 6. My sorcerer is ready to go. So... 
That's seven, 10, 18, 20, 22 plus six. So 28 bludgeoning damage for the first one. Wilbur is still up after that first one. Five, six. And Wilbur goes down. And that's 17 plus six. So uh, 13 more bludgeoning damage. Okay. Wilbur is unconscious. Creatures that take damage from a mushroom golem must make a successful DC constitution saving throw or gain one level of exhaustion. So you got to do a DC uh, constitution save. I got a 10. You gain another level of exhaustion. So I have to do two of those, one for each hit? Uh, no, just one. OK. Um, your wounds, the little blood on your, on your skin or your scales have opened up, um, sprout a little bit of, start sprouting a little bit of mushrooms. Um, these mushrooms cannot be healed by expending uh, hit dice, uh, but they must be healed using magic. Uh, you hear a whistle. Okay, I think uh, I think I would do the uh, the right thing here and stop uh, the fact right that you know I, I don't know if you passed the test, but uh, you know I now see people take it for beating like I seen you do take it a beating. So maybe you come back. Uh, we can we show you the kingdom. You speak it to uh, the black uh, water girl, mushroom, or whatever you look for. You know, maybe you see what you need. What do you think? What do you say? What do you say? He looks at Jake. What do you say? I just rolled a that saving throw because we we're all talking natural one. Are you dead? I think uh, Wolf is dead. His mushroom, his his wounds um, cannot be healed by anything but magic. That's not good. The uh, mushroom people um, spoke to uh, Chris, I mean, uh, to Sprock, and they said that uh, they can, you know, they've never seen a person take a beating like that before. <laughs> if they're willing to lead you, lead you back to their kingdom. Um, and hopefully they run into the farmer on their way. Wilbur uh, rolled another six. I was death saying the rose is gone. He's dead? Well, he can't I be healed, think, right? So there's like nothing well, we can I mean, really unless do. Unless anyone has a magic something or, you know. We can't use spells. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a brain for you, Sprock. Yeah. I'll eat that brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's hilarious. Chris. Um, so I think so. He just he just killed Chris. Um, yep. You guys have a decision you want. You need. You might need to vote as to whether or not you want to go back to the Mushroom Kingdom. Um, there are still you don't know about these cats, but Sprock is going. Sprock, are you going to eat that brain? Yes, I need energy. I'll eat that brain. So, it, but the graphic and the idea sounds great. So. Wilbur just dies, and Sprock is going to go over and start munching on that brain. No objections from anyone? No, stare the mushrooms in the eyes when you do it. Okay. Um, Chris, what does... Do I, do I consume anything of Wilbur? Like, like, do I get his memories? Yes, you do. Chris, what um, memories does he... I'll send you my um, backstory, but you get, a, get memories of a young... 
uh, what whatever he is, a young kobold growing up in a like a marshy forest village, going to um, uh, class every day, learning about the the uh, trivium and the the heroes and specifically the green hero. And uh, year after year, seeing the uh, the sacrifices that they're making, trying in hopes of uh, one day one of them becoming the green hero. And uh, finally, you see him go up to uh, the sages and or the the leaders and offer himself as one of the sacrifices. And uh, you see him go into a coffin and get buried alive. And then you see him pop out of the uh, the coffin on the the island and greet you all. And you also learn a whole lot of uh, random knowledge of the lore of the game from Spencer. And a lot of weird thoughts about Ignis. Gotcha. Yeah, you. Um, I'm assuming that you're going to tell the group what you learned here, psychos. Yes. Or... Yes, I'm sharing it with the group. I'll uh, write you a share um, lore the group will learn from uh, the studies. What was the what was the background where you where you studied? It was a uh, temple, right? Like a um, like a cult. Cult. Where it was a cult to like the green hero. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So. The mushrooms sort of seem indifferent to that. They don't really know your kind. They see this weird um, creature eat another one of its friends, it looks like. They are shocked and amazed a little bit, um, but they are very much indifferent. Uh, they do see, um, they do say, okay, uh, you follow us. Uh, give me a perception check. Sprock, since you're the one who is more nature oriented. 17. You see their feet sort of go into the ground um, and it's almost as in their, their bodies sort of shrink down into these uh, mushroom, these different, um, you say they hear, hey, come uh, follow uh, me. And they sort of, uh, shrink down into these mushrooms um, and sort of dis disappear. Um, there are roots in the ground that you know from your from your life. Oh, uh, Aaron, you have a mushroom book. Um, give me a perception check. I never said it's morphin' time. You Going should on. have. I never had to. They never I got the... didn't get low enough. The Wilbur. Yeah, Wilbur didn't. He could have. Uh, uh, 21. Um, first off, you see a... Um, oh, uh, Sprock. You cough up a, a green coin from the brain. Um, and... Uh, that looks like uh, the coin that uh, Power Ranger coin. Um, Ernest, you remember in you have when you're staring at this uh, mushroom. I use my mage hand to snatch the green coin. Nice. Um, you see, you see a mushroom that seems familiar um, to an image of, in in the book that you found from the Ware Farm, um, and that page said. Uh, I'm assuming did you did you read that during that whole book during a like a rest of some kind? I forgot what yeah, you did. It was it was during the long rest that we had. I think it was not the last one, but the one before, was it? Because I only needed four yeah. hours. I only needed yeah, because you and you read through it. Yeah. All yeah. right. So you you um you remember a chapter um that sort of tells about how mushroom uh fungus in the forest are interconnected uh, in the ground through root, a root system that, that connects the whole jungle together um, and that some of the mushroom uh, members uh, have been able to uh, travel through these, uh, I forgot what the exact language is in real life, but um, through these interwebs of uh, fungi in the ground. Um, 
called, uh, I think it's called Underground Network. Okay. The Missilial Network, which is a real life. Um, it's like, it's sort of like in uh, The Last of Us type, type idea, where like you step on a mushroom in Pennsylvania, in West Pennsylvania, there's a chance that the, the mushroom will have, it'll have an effect on a mushroom like, you know, a couple miles away because of the network. And you remember that they um, travel towards from your um from your reading towards uh wetter darker um areas towards moisture oh they go towards moisture yeah okay so i'm going to relay that information to the group And be like, hey guys, these mushrooms, they grow, they they prefer moisture and they grow towards it. So if we follow them, we'll head towards like a water source of some sort. You will find water. Also, I alert the group that I can find water. That's one of my skills. Oh, as long as there's water shit. where we are, I can find I can find it once a day. And also food, as long as there's berries or small game. Um, so you can just sense it? I can just sense it, yeah. Okay, you sense that, the, you see the screen? You sense there's oh, water. Oh, up to five people so we can get these dwarfs in on the mix. There you go. You sense, then the dwarfs are going to say, my God, you guys are barbaric. One of your men just ate another man's brain. And oh, I guess you don't want any water, water dwarf. Missilial networks? My goodness, they remind me of the sky people. Um, where to, my friends? Where are we going? Do you want us to carry your dead one's body for you? Thank you for saving us from the mushroom. <laughs> yeah, carry his body. Okay, no problem. Um, they're gonna carry you. Uh, there is, uh, you sense, how does that work? You can sense moisture? Uh, I don't know. It's just like an inherent trait. I can just find water and food. Hmm. Okay. As long as um, it's in the place we are. As long as it's in find the trails. So yeah. I think like, I, I, do, I do like a cool, like, you know, I put my hand to the ground and I pretend like I'm doing something cool, but really I'm just, it's just innate. So I but think I want to fool everyone. Uh, Matt is going to start leading the group uh, into the start. He's going to be the leader. Um, yeah, I'll lead towards the water. Um, and this is where we're going to stop.